But we begin, as promised this evening, with Congressman Ted Yoho. Congressman, thank you very much uh, for joining us tonight. I know it's been uh, a heck of a week for you, and um, we're glad yeah. that you came here tonight to sort of tell your side of the story. Um, so it seems that what, what prompted this on your end, at least according to what we're hearing, is that you were appalled by the comments that she made about the fact that poverty and unemployment was, was leading people to commit crimes. Is that what sparked you? That was part of it, yeah. I mean, but it's been a series of things, you know. Um, I, I can go into that, but, you know, that was something, and I just, I asked her uh, if we could have a, a, a minute of her time and ask her a question. You did? Because she said you just accosted her. She didn't know what was coming at her. And then she said you called her disgusting. Did you call her disgusting? No, ma'am. I was coming down from voting up from the Capitol as I walk across, as I always do. And I was coming up, to, she was coming up the stairs and I, I, I asked her, I says, hey, do you have a minute? And she goes, yes. And we've never had a conversation before. And I wanted to ask her about this policy that she was telling people it was okay to shoplift if you were hungry. And uh, it went backwards from there. So, but did, all right, did, you know, did, did you call her disgusting? And did you suggest that she was no. losing her mind? Did you use those words? You never said she was disgusting. You never said she was losing her mind. No, every, no everything was directed at policy. Uh, when she told me that, yes, she thought it was right for people to go ahead and shoplift if you're hungry, I said, seriously, with as many social programs and faith-based programs and all these other and, and food kitchens around, the best that you can do is to offer people in your district um, to go ahead and shoplift while you're calling at the same time to defund the police. I said, those are just absolutely the most frickin' uh, crazy policy ideas I've ever had. And I said, your policy ideas are disgusting. And I turned around and walked away. And that now, was when really you turned around and walked away, as, did you... as that interaction lasted. Wait, these stories are so totally different uh, that the two of you are telling, so it's kind of hard to yeah. know, you know, who, who, which version is, is the truth. But when you turned around and walked down the stairs, did you refer to her as a F-word, B-word? No, I, I walked down the steps and I said, this is just such frickin' BS. But, and, and that's all I said. And then a reporter came up to me and said, what was that about? I said, no comment. Did you say this? I said, no comment. And I left. You know, there's another part of the story that's not being told that she doesn't tell. And I don't want to get into that because okay. the policies that they're telling uh, to tell people you don't have to fund the police department. We need to defund it. I mean, it got defunded in New York, $1.5 billion. And then to go out and tell people it's okay to shoplift. Well, I don't believe it's okay for the shop owner who owns that store, who's trying to make a living for his family, to have somebody come and say, well, Miss Ocasio-Cortez says it's okay. Or what about the, the, the student or the, the, the child that's watching this with her mom and dad and said, well, I guess I can go shoplift, mom. She said it was okay. These are the things that are tearing this country apart and it needs to stop. And uh, I can go on and on, but I don't want to because I know that's not the purpose of this. These are the policies. No, I'm just curious. You, you said there's something America. that I could tell you that she's not telling the truth about. And that you, what is that? Because, you know, this, this story, no, I, I, I was actually surprised at how much traction this got, but it's getting a ton of attention. People are clicking on it all the time. So is there something else yeah. that we need to know about what happened between you two? Well, I thought it was interesting. Um, like I said, I've never had a um, uh, dialogue with her, and I've been meaning to, but with the pandemic and the way Washington's working, we're running out of time, and I wanted to address this. And I do this with a lot of members, and I've done this with many members questioning policies and just to try to get where they understand, you know, so we have an understanding. But as I was coming back from my second uh, vote series, I was walking back to my office, and all of a sudden I hear somebody go, Ted Yoho, she yells it out. I turn around and she's pointing her finger at me. She goes, Ted Yoho, I am not done with you. And I'm like, okay. And that, I mean, I, like I said, and so I guess you see what's going on now is, you know, she's making hay out of this. She's fundraising off of this. She's out in front of the Capitol wearing her uh, um, COVID mask. 
uh, playing that song, boss, I'm not going to say it, playing boss so-and-so, making fun of this. But yet she's on the floor crying, saying how bad this is, but yet she's out there saying the same thing. And, uh, you know, it's disingenuous. On the meantime, All right, so you think she's, I haven't she's said leveraging a word about this. this. And I've been going— Yeah. Well, I mean, well, you, you got up on the floor who's, and you who's, said, who's and you apologized. Hands. She said she didn't consider that an apologize. I'm sorry that we keep stepping on each other. We do have a little bit of a delay. Um, but but you, she then came back to your latest statement and she said she didn't see what you said as an apology at all. Uh, she said if he wants to continue to lie about what happened, that's his business. They think their little man card will be taken away if they apologize for their absurd behavior. That's her most recent comment. No. What's your reaction to that? Well, again, w w what is that attacking? I mean, that's attacking a person's character. It's their uh, manliness, I, I guess, is what she's doing. And then she spun this into saying that I'm attacking all women, and it was women of color. This was strictly policy, and those policies are bad for this nation. I mean, do you think it's right? Or, or I'm going to ask the American people. Do you think it's right to advocate shoplifting um, instead of going to your representative and getting help and assistance, whether it's food stamps. And I've been it on food stamps, to me, and I, you know, I think I, I talked about that. I, yes, you have. I did hear you say that. Um, you know, it sounded to me, you know, that that uh, video that she made got a lot of attention, and it did sound like she was excusing some sure. of that behavior, or at least she was saying that she understood where she thought it was coming from, and she said she wasn't talking about people getting shot in Chicago and Seattle and elsewhere. She said she was talking about small crime that came from people who were, were out of work. But, I, you know, what I want to get to is the point that you just touched on, because you said, I have had similar conversations with other people about policy. Now, did you get heated in those conversations? Might any of those people have thought that you were out of line in your language? with them? And were those people men? And were those people women? Did they cross the gender uh, line? Sure. I've had conversations uh, <laughs> with Ro Kahana, Terry Sewell, Luis Gutierrez uh, on several things. And we don't always walk away agreeing, but we always wind up, it seems like, afterwards laughing about things. And, you know, we're going to disagree on that, but we're always amicable. And, um, you know, so she's, I'm there she's to solve been problems. Really laying down we've the got gender so many problems here. in this country. She well, she here, here's yeah, part of her is. speech, which got a lot of attention. Uh, it, let, let's let's play that because I want to get you re to react to this. Sure. This harm that Mr. Yoho levied, it tried to levy against me, was not just an incident directed at me. But when you do that to any woman, what Mr. Yoho did was give permission to other men to do that to his daughters. What do you think about that? Uh, you know, she's entitled to her opinion. That is nothing to do with our conversation. It was strictly about her policies. And, you know, I, I went to the southwest border the week after she left. I went into the same cell she was in where she said uh, children were being snatched away from their parents and the detainees were made to drink out of the toilet and she was cussing in front of the, the workers there. And when I found out, they said, this is the drinking fountain. This is this, you know, and so she, this has been a history yeah. of what she's doing. And it's 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 identity politics. And I don't play that. And, uh, you know, I've got a pretty good reputation, uh, whether it's up there or down here in my district. I've practiced for almost 30 years. Uh, I'm not going to try to defend myself. Um, I, I, I feel bad for Miss Ocasio-Cortez, who thinks this was, uh, I called her these names. I did not call her these names. This was strictly on policy. And then, again, I've been quiet about this. I'm not, you know, I'm not worried about this. I can, I'm not asking anybody to defend me. I'm not going on YouTube. I'm not out in front of the Capitol playing uh, whatever that boss something. I don't listen to that music. We've got serious problems in this nation. We've got $30 trillion in debt. I've got China breathing down our throat. And I'm not gonna, this is what's wrong with Washington. They'll capitalize on stuff like this and have identity politics, and it's not moving this nation forward, and it needs to stop. 
Well, uh, you say you've had similar conversations that got heated with, with men and women, uh, and she clearly is trying to make this into an attack on women. She called you out and said that you weren't decent just because you have a wife and daughters. Um, so, you know, there, there's no doubt that she's playing this to the hilt, and she's got a lot of support behind her from sure. Nancy Pelosi and uh, Ayanna Presley and other folks who are really making this into a much broader topic. You've also got the Bread for the World organization suggesting that maybe they should take you off their board. What do you say about that? before I let you go. Well, you know, I think it's interesting, and I saw the clip before this on Fox News that said I was loser of the week. You're supposed to be fair and balanced. Nobody's even talked to me, and if the bread of the Almighty wants to do that, that's fine. But I think it's funny how the definition of a democracy is mob rule, and you're hanging somebody before you even talk to them. That's wrong, and that's another thing that's wrong in this country. We need well, to come together, I agree with you there. and if we can have a dis if we have a disagreement, let's talk about it and let's move on. And we may not always agree on it, and, and you know I know that. I mean I've been married for 45 years, and uh, you know for anyways you take care, and I thank you for the opportunity to come on here. You're very welcome. And we always like to hear both sides of the story. You, we did not call you or anyone else the loser of the week. We don't do that segment here. Um, but and we also well, invite her to come on, on uh, and talk about it as well. So <laughs> I think it was that show before you. <laughs> OK. All right. Ted Yoho, Representative, uh, thank you very much. And as I said, uh, we uh, open thank invitation you, to Representative Ocasio-Cortez, because clearly these are uh, very divergent stories. Um, and we would love to bring you both sides. Thank very. you, sir.